<laughs> okay. So, but it's about the United States, so now we can stick to the English. So, good evening uh, or good afternoon, uh, dear colleagues. Thank you for waiting and joining this press conference after the video conference of the foreign ministers of the European Union, uh, uh, chaired by the High Representative Jose Borrell, who will uh, tell you now more about the content of the discussions, and then we'll take also a few questions. High Representative, please, you can go ahead. Where is the camera? The camera is in front, no? Okay. Okay, good afternoon or evening to all of you. Thank you for following this press point. Today we have had an important Foreign Affairs Council with a video conference with the Secretary of State of the United States, uh, Mike Pompeo. The main point of the agenda was this, the transatlantic relations. We engage in a strategic dialogue with Mike Pompeo on our relations and on the key foreign policy issues, both for the European Union and the United States. As you know, and it's uh, unnecessary to stress, but let me do, that the transatlantic partnership is one of the key pillars of the world order, and today's video meeting reaffirm the commitment of the European Union member states to continue this close transatlantic cooperation. We maybe don't agree on everything, but uh, our commitment to the transatlantic cooperation is as strong as ever. We focus on three issues and several others, but the main dishes were China, the peace process in the Middle East, and the Eastern neighborhood, with emphasis on Ukraine. And we discuss above uh, all this in a cross section on these three issues, the problem of disinformation, which is affecting the three of them, and mainly the one related with the Eastern neighborhood uh, and China. Also, we talk about the coronavirus pandemic as a part of this global crisis, we underline that there is currently no better example of the need for international cooperation than this uh, health crisis. That's why we have regretted the U.S. announcement that uh, they intend to withdraw from the World Health Organization and expect that this decision could be reconsidered because global problems need global solutions and multilateral tools. Multilateral cooperation is uh, more needed than ever. There's a big demand and a short supply. We exchange views on China and its growing assertiveness on many fronts. There are issues that we face together in the relationship with China and where our Close cooperation is very important to address them jointly. This includes, for sure, the situation in Hong Kong. I suggested to launch a distinct bilateral dialogue focusing on China and the challenges its actions and ambitions means for us, for the U.S. and for the European Union. On the Middle East peace process, we made clear that it is important to encourage the Israelis and the Palestinians to engage in a credible and meaningful political process. We recognize that the U.S. plan created a certain momentum about a political process that was stopped for too long, and this momentum can be used to start a joint international efforts on the basis of existing internationally agreed parameters. And we, from the European Union, we stand ready to help and to facilitate such process. We were also clear about the consequences of a possible annexation for the prospects of a two-state solution, but also for regional stability. On that, I think that um, 
many member states were very much clear about it. On the Eastern Neighborhood, which was the third pillar of our conference today, we confirmed the strong European Union-United States partnership. It will remain crucial, particularly on Ukraine. Of course, we still need Russia to do its part in the full implementation of the Minsk Agreement, and our position remains clear and unchanged. Uh, some member states raise also the situation in the eastern Mediterranean, where we are increasingly concerned about the recent escalations from Turkey. We agreed on the need for de-escalation and for to return to a true partnership. There have been some incidents in the last days. You are aware of that around Irini operation. Tomorrow we'll talk about it on the Council with the Defence Ministers. And I also recall that we are organising the Brussels Syria conference. It will be the fourth time we do that, on the 13th of June, and ask for the US participation. Finally, disinformation. This is a shared challenge. The external disinformation actors are targeting both us, and we agreed to look in ways to reinforce our partnership in responding to this growing problem. Truth has to prevail. Democracy is a system that works on the basis of information, free and fair information. And if the citizens uh, don't have access to free information or if the citizens are uh, poisoned with uh, fake news, then their participation on the democratic processes can be jeopardized. Well, this is a, a brief outline of what we have been discussing during this three hours meeting. Now uh, I am at your disposal to take some questions. Thank you very much. So we go to questions. First hand raised was from Atanasios. Atanasios, your mic will be unmuted in a second. It's unmuted. You can go ahead with your question. Thanks very much, Peter. Athanasio, Star Channel, Greece. Uh, uh, High Representative, uh, you mentioned the issue of uh, the concerns for Turkey's actions in the Eastern Mediterranean. Uh, in your discussion with the Secretary of State uh, Pompeo, did he agree to send a transatlantic message to Turkey for de-escalation? And practically, how is that going to happen? How, how uh, the U.S. is going to be involved in this whole situation? And furthermore, what, what other steps are you planning to take on the whole issue of uh, the uh, behavior of Turkey in the Eastern Mediterranean, either that is the explosive economic zone or Cyprus or the uh, uh, sea near Crete? Are you planning to discuss it again? Are you planning to start negotiations with Turkey in some kind of uh, format? Thanks. Uh, yes, uh, the issue has been. It was not one of the three blocks uh, around uh, our discussion. No, as I had mentioned, uh, it has been mentioned for me and for some member states. Uh, the, sec the Secretary of State has been uh, considering the situation in the Mediterranean, but mainly related to the situation in Libya. In any case, the situation on the Eastern Mediterranean is becoming worse. Uh, Greece and Cyprus has been rightly complaining about the fact that there are drillings uh, in the very near of their coastlines. And uh, on the next Foreign Affairs Council, we will put the issue of uh, our relations with Turkey would take you into account all aspects of this uh, complex relation. Okay, thank you. Next question from Nuradin Fridhi. Nuradin, your mic is going to be open soon, just a second. It's open, you can go ahead. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, High Representative. Can you hear me? 
Yep. Sorry. Okay. Très bien. Cool, sir. In Tarbona, in Libya, there are crimes which are amounting to crime against humanity. Uh, Turkey is planning to set up um, at least a couple of military bases, an air base in al a navy base in Sapa. This is what the Turkish and Turkish are discussing. So my question, do you expect a discussion you had with, with uh, Secretary Pompeo? The conflict is intensifying. And do you have the United States a convergence on the way out of the, this crisis? Just a very short remark that they asked you last time and didn't get my answer. Did you have uh, contacts with Mr. Saraj or his diplomats the days before? Thank you, sir. Um, I have a lot of contact with everybody uh, all the time. But today was a meeting with the Secretary of State of the United States, and we have been discussing about these three main blocks. Uh, we haven't gone in detail on the situation in Libya. I, I, I will be very happy to inform you of the, the things that are happening today, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the Foreign Affairs Council, but uh, we, we haven't gone on the on details of the situation in Libya. Okay, thank like you. Very much. It has been mentioned, but uh, I cannot answer your question because it has nothing to do with the council today. Thank you. Next question, which for sure will have something to do with the topics of the council, uh, might be China, because the next one is Stuart Lau from South China Morning Post. Stuart, your mic is being opened now. You can speak. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, High Representative. So I have two questions here. The first one is about what you just described as the distinct bilateral dialogue on China with the U.S. Can you tell us a little bit more about um, the idea behind it and the format of it and what you would specifically like to discuss with the U.S. side with this dialogue? And the second question is about um, Hong Kong, of course. Um, the law is, um, the national security law is um, now being rumored to be introduced by the end of this week, which would be just a weekend before the EU-China summit. Uh, under such circumstances, do, do, you, do you still think this is the right time to have a dialogue with China, and would the focus of the dialogue change in any way? Thank you. We are going to have a, a summit next Monday. European Union China. We are preparing the summit. We had uh, a structured political dialogue with the Foreign Affairs Minister of China last week. We continue negotiating in order to see if we can bring to the summit some deliverables related with our cooperation agenda for 2025 for the next five years. Uh, and it's, no, it's not easy to find an agreement. Not, we don't have it yet, but we continue discussing with our Chinese counterpart until the last, until the last minute. And you can imagine which will be the issue of, uh, of dialogue between China and U.S. focusing on China, no? There are a broad range of issues. For us, it's important to stay together with the U.S. in order to share concerns and to look for a common grounds to defend our values and our interests. But we haven't gone to more detail. Okay, thank, you very, thank you very much. Next question, next uh, hand which was raised was from Lawrence Norman, Wall Street Journal. Lawrence, you can... Yes, the mic is open. You can go ahead. Hi, uh, thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, hi, Rep. Uh, Stuart uh, asked many of the questions that I was going to ask uh, on this dialogue with China. Can you be a little specific? Will this be at the level of yourself and Secretary Pompeo? Or at what level will it be? 
and on annexation, High Rep, did um, Secretary Pompeo give any indication that the United States is or will rein in um, Israeli plans to annex some Palestinian territory? Thank you. Look, uh, we have been talking about three important issues. It means that we have been able to devote about 20, 25 minutes to each one of them. You can imagine that uh, we haven't been able to go to very much detail. It's uh, me who took the initiative uh, during the conclusions that uh, having had uh, not so much time to go deeper on the subject, that maybe it would be a good idea, uh, I suggested, suggested, about the possibility of continuing engaging in a bilateral dialogue, focusing on China and the challenges that uh, the more assertive attitude of China is putting on the, on the world stage. It has been a, a suggestion that I put on the table during my conclusions, but uh, nothing more than that. No? On the Middle East peace process, it has been clear that it is important to encourage the Israelis and Palestinians to engage in a credible and meaningful political process. For us, there is no other way than to resume talks. We recognize the merit of the U.S. plan because it has created a certain momentum where there was nothing. And I think this momentum can be used to start an international process. But this process, from the European side, has to be on the basis of existing internationally agreed parameters. And it's not a secret because it has been said in several EU statements that the initial uh, plan presented by the US does not agree with these parameters. Okay, thank you very much. And but this may be the starting point of the negotiation. Theoretically, a negotiation doesn't finish with the same point that it starts. But because if not, it would not, it would not be a negotiation, but an ultimatum. Okay, thank you very much. And since the time is pressing and next uh, points of uh, agenda of higher up are uh, approaching very fast, last question, Thomas Gutschke, Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung. Thomas, the mic is open. Thank you, Peter. Hi, Rep. My question refers to what you just said. Um, ahead of the meeting, the German foreign minister said that he wanted to propose to Foreign Minister Pompeo um, to discuss all issues between Palestinians and Israelis in a new multilateral format. Um, my question is, has Pompeo agreed to that proposal? No, Mr. Pom uh, Mr. Pompeo has not accepted nor refused anything. Uh, it was not a matter of accepting or refusing. It was, a, it was a conversation. He was taking note. He was answering in general. But uh, we haven't been into a negotiation among us and Mr. Pompeo. It was an exchange of views. I am sure he has been taking good notice of everything that different member states have been explaining to him, among them Germany, who has been very much concrete and insisting a lot about the, the need of preventing annexation because it would be not without consequences and presenting proposals. Uh, Mr. Pompeo has been taking note of uh, this point of view and other several different points of view. When you listen to Luxembourg and you listen to Hungary, uh, there are different points of views. Uh, 
and he noticed that there were different points of views among member states. Okay. But for sure, he has not said, I agree with that, I disagree with that, I accept this proposal, I refuse this proposal. This was not the mood of the meeting. Thank you very much. The meeting is concluded. So is the press conference of today. There will be more opportunity to ask questions tomorrow after the FAC of the uh, after the meeting tomorrow. Of the, tomorrow. There are a lot of issues on the Defence Council. Exactly. So I am sure you will be very much interested in some things related with the Rini operation, for example. Absolutely. So you are all welcome to join tomorrow for today. Thank you very much. Thank you to our interpreters as well, and have a nice evening. Bye. Merci.